In this presentation, we'll go over Fink's taxonomy of significant learning, and then we'll talk about how to write learning goals. Uh, all right, so as you can see on the uh, slide, there are six different learning, or sorry, taxonomy of significant learning from Fink. And the whole point of any of these is that we create a significant learning experience in our course or in our lesson. As remember, we can talk about course design, but we can also apply the information from course design to uh, lesson design. So let's talk about each one of these uh, taxonomies. These are similar to Bloom's, not much, not much different to Bloom's, but there are some differences between Bloom's and Fink's. So foundational knowledge, uh, this can be with uh, the thought of, I understand and remember this information. So this is foundation to our class. This is probably like uh, 100, 200 level at the undergraduate class, but we, we also have to have foundational information. And in our particular course, the uh, therapy, or sorry, the use kinesiology 750 course that you're taking, I've had to provide you some foundational knowledge. Um, for example, like this particular uh, set of lectures is quite foundational because I have to provide you information, uh, some ideals and key terms uh, so you can understand information to apply it later. And uh, one of the action verbs for this particular uh, level on the taxonomy is identify. And I'll talk about what the verbs mean at the end of this presentation. Just keep that in the back of your mind. Our next uh, <clears throat> level is application. This means students can apply the information. This can be the skills. So we can think of this as the clinical skills. This is the thinking or the cognitive area, critical thinking, creative thinking, and practical thinking. And then doing projects. Uh, this is an area uh, where we're doing whatever. We've talked about the foundational knowledge, now we're applying that information. Some action verbs for this particular level is demonstrate or, or design. Then we move into integration. Uh, they're connecting the dots. This can be connect ideals, people, or other areas of their life. This really empowers the students. They feel like they actually got it and they understand it. Um, and these type of verbs, action verbs, are connect. I like compare and contrast. We relate two points together. I I'm do uh, some... Bible study teaching at my church. It's a it's called small group where we break into a small group and go over a lesson of a passage in the, in the Bible. And a lot of the questions I end up asking are compare and contrast because I like to see the connection between ideals here. Then the human dimension is how does this material relate to me? Um, Learn about others, learn about yourself, and compare yourselves to one another. Um, this one was kind of hard for me to come up with a good verb for this behavior or this particular uh, level on a taxonomy. Uh, so relating to me is just one way. How, how does uh, the students will be able to uh, relate this information to themselves? It's not a very good learning objective, but... Uh, this one was pretty challenging for me to come up with a good action verb. Caring. Uh, this is the, the information that um, gets down into the deep of their heart. You know, it really energizes to me. It matters to me. Uh, where a student will develop new feelings, interests, and values based on a lesson. So some action verbs here are values, feelings, interest, and duh. Let's put the same things there. How do we learn? Um, we're still trying to teach students how to learn, so we have to learn how to learn. Um, 
and then they can take that information that they've learned, they apply it to their life for the rest of their life and out of the, in and out of a classroom. Again, I had a hard time with good action verbs of this one. So even the phrases, <coughs> excuse me, blow the quote to me seems like good action verbs. Becoming a better learner, inquiring about a subject, becoming self-directed learner, identify credible sources, frame useful questions. So those to me are action verbs. I couldn't come up with just one word. They're more like fr action verbs or phrases, sorry. Again, keep that in the back of your mind. We're going to talk about it real quick when I keep on stressing the verb. Other thing that we need to uh, uh, keep uh, in our mind is learning domains. This is big in uh, physical education. The athletic training, previous versions of athletic training competency is used. Uh, these particular domains, now they've kind of collapsed them into just two domains. So we have the cognitive, psychomotor, and effective domains. So cognitive is your mind. Uh, so that's the knowledge base. So that's the term that we're using in the new competencies. Psychomotor is doing a skill. It's actually, um, yeah, it's doing a skill. So on PE, we'll talk about shooting a basketball. That's the skill on athletic training. That would be skills, taping, clinical assessment skills, those type of skills. So, uh, so we got knowledge and skills. Effective, this is the touchy-feely different areas. I believe in our new um, competencies, this has been removed basically. Um, it's there, but it's not as specific as it used to be in the previous versions of our competencies. And now we have the clinical integration proficiencies or CIPs. This is really our psychomotor learning domain. So just to keep that in your mind that there are three main now. We just, in our new competencies, it's knowledge and skills. Um, and then we have the psychomotor and the, the CIPs. All right, so when we're writing learning goals, now there's different ways to call learning goals. I call them student learning outcomes. These can also be called uh, desired student outcomes or just learning out outcomes. So there's a lot of different ways to say the same thing. They, these are the things that we expect the students to know, do, by the end of our lesson or class that we hope that they'll be able to do years down the road. Okay, so when you're writing a lesson, or sorry, uh, student learning objectives, learning goals for your course, they may be bigger uh, ideals. Whereas if we're gonna write learning objectives for a lesson, they're gonna be a lot more specific. So, we have three main areas that we want to make sure that we cover in our learning goals, learning objectives, whatever, again, whatever ways we want to call them. I can get, I'm going to call them student learning objectives, SLOs. First one is behavior. And so this is, we want to use action verbs that are appropriate for the taxonomy level. That's why I was talking about the different action verbs. Uh, I've provided a, some couple files in uh, the course for the Bloom's taxonomy. And if I can find more information about the taxonomy from Fink, I'll also provide uh, files for that. So we want to use appropriate action verbs that describe the things that we want our students to do in our class. Uh, it's really important that whatever those behaviors are, that they're measurable because we want to be able to assess them. We want to assess to see if a student is meeting our learning objectives, our student learning outcome uh, from our class as a whole, but also in the lessons that we'll, we'll write. So that's our first thing that we'll, that's one thing that we want to make sure that we provide in our student learning outcomes. Next one is the conditions. Where should that behavior be exhibited? It should it be exhibited in a written exam, uh, a clclinical setting that should it be exhibited in a practical exam. The next part is the criterion for mastery. 
Uh, what level needs to be is considered mastering that particular behavior in, a, in the specific condition? So what we have to ask ourselves, what should an entry-level athletic trainer reach to? How good should they be on that particular goal or objective that we're, we wrote? So let's give you some examples here. I'm taking these straight from our educational competencies document. Um, I've added the phrase, the student will be able to, because uh, I like that, because it tells us what the student will be able to do uh, at the end of the lesson or at the end of our class course. So the student will be able to demonstrate, that's our verb, and that verb is at the, um, well, one thing I forgot to say, is the, the verb needs to be appropriate, I guess I did say it now, I'm thinking about it. The verb needs to be appropriate for the taxonomy level that we're trying to get that student to, because that's the goal, is we want to move them through these different uh, taxonomies. Uh, Blooms is more recognized than um, Fink's. So if we're thinking about Blooms, we want to move them from the foundational knowledge up up the pyramid. So the verb for this learning goal is demonstrate. So that verb is at the application level, both for Blooms and for Fink. So that's the level on the taxonomy that's at. Then the behavior is to demonstrate the ability to perform a private primary survey. So that's the behavior that they have to demonstrate as assessed by a clinical laboratory examination. That's the condition that they need to do that behavior underneath. And the AC-4 is the uh, content area and the specific uh, skill and knowledge for that particular content area. So this particular learning goal example is missing uh, the criterion for mastery. How good should the student be to be considered entry level? Should they get a 70% out of 100%? Uh, so that's the question that we have. So we're missing something in this particular example. Here's the better example because it has all of them. So the student will be able to explain. So this is a verb. That's the action verb. This is comprehension or foundation, foundational knowledge. Comprehension at the Bloom's level, Bloom's taxonomy or foundational knowledge in the Fink taxonomy. And here's the behavior. They need to explain the theory and principle relating to the expected physiological responses during and following therapeutic invention. So that's what they're expected to do. That's the behavior. This is a cognitive um, level or sorry, cognitive domain, with a score of 80% or greater, so that's the measurable assessment or and criterion for mastery, and the condition is on a written examination. And so that's the, and the TI-8 is the um, content area and what specific objective. So this is how I like you to write your learning student learning outcomes for your uh, choice signature assignment uh, when you do your lesson plan. Um, you don't have to put in the verb, where the behavior is at, um, where it's assessed, and all those type of things. I just want to give you an example of what uh, a student learning outcome should look like and read like. And I, I'm providing you an, also a template for your learning or sorry, for your lesson plan. So hof hopefully this is helpful when you're both creating a course and creating a lesson because there is some carryover for both.